it's Marcus. Today I'm going to be talking to you about chemistry in the IB diploma. I'm going to be giving you seven tips and tricks that you need to get that seven in IB chemistry. Tip number one with creating chemistry notes, organize yourself. So with chemistry, there is a large issue concerning class notes, where there's a vast amount of information that you have to take notes on. And often these can get very disorganized and a little bit all over the place. So my recommendation is to file these notes in a large binder and you number each page at the top right corner with two different numbers. So the first one is a topic it belongs to. So if this page was concerning topic five, it would have a number five as the first number. Then the second one would be the number of the document that I have made. So if this was the second sheet that I have made on topic five, then I would label it number two. So in the end, it would be five, two. Then I would use a letter to be able to distinguish between which type of note this is. This is so that when I go through these notes, I can easily flick through and know what type of sheet I should pay attention to and is really important to me and which type I can skip over. This makes it much easier to use notes for then studying in the future. For example, I would have A on a sheet that comprised of just notes. I would put B on a sheet that comprised of calculations. I would put C on a sheet of homework. I would put D on maybe a practical write-up and so on. This way, when I'm reading through them, my notes aren't only organized by the topic that they belong to, but also by the type of document that they are and how relevant it is to me. So my second tip is about the chemistry IA. My tip is to be original. What I would suggest is for you to go through the syllabus or through the textbook and find things that interest you. Then I would try to find things associated to that that might be unknown to you or even unknown to the whole internet. If you find something that you can't find the answer to and it's a good place to start your studies. And that's an indication that it hasn't been done before. My teachers told me to find something that hadn't been found before and find something that hadn't been done before. So that's exactly what I did. In terms of timing for your IA, I would recommend two weeks of actual pure data collection for your IA, where I went in every lunchtime and every class and every few period that I had to collect data, as well as two weeks before that to make sure that you have all your calculations correct, to make sure that you have all of your concentrations and all of the volumes that you need because if you get to those two weeks of actual testing and you don't know what you're testing on, then you have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how you're actually going to carry out the experiment. And that's a big waste of time. So tip three is about paper one, where my tip is to eliminate the unworthy. I feel that paper one should be used to get the maximum amount of marks possible to then balance out the really hard paper two, where it is very likely that you will lose a lot of marks in. So with these questions, the technique I would use is the elimination method, where I would go through each option in the answer for the question, and I would put a tick next to the ones that I thought would write. I would put a dot next to the ones which I am unsure about, and I would put a cross next to the ones which I am pretty sure that aren't the right answer. This way, I can make sure that I have evaluated all the options and that I have the highest likelihood of getting that mark. The number of times I would have been caught out if I hadn't used this method is countless, since there are times which I can select an option and think it's the right one. However, when reading the other options, I realize that there's another answer which is far more suitable to the question at hand. This also works particularly well with the questions where they give you three options and then you have to say which are the right ones. If I know that one option is definitely wrong, then I can narrow down my responses to the point where I'm sometimes even left with just one remaining available answer. Putting these notes, such as the tick and the dot, are really useful for then going back over the test and making sure that you have everything right, since you can compare the options which have dots and ticks and make sure that you really have the right answer without having to go through each option again and read through the options which are clearly incorrect. So tip number four is about paper two, where my tip is to understand the mark scheme. So paper two is by far the hardest paper and it is an absolute monster and it is just soul sucking. This is where people mess up the most and there's a reason for that. The questions in it require a much deeper understanding of the topic as well as a much deeper understanding of how they should be answering each specific question. My recommendation is when you are doing practice questions and past papers, to have the mark scheme by your side. So when you are marking it, you can look through exactly what the mark scheme says and understand why the mark scheme is giving marks in those specific places, particularly in the ones where you get wrong. After a while, you get accustomed to the way the mark scheme works and you begin to understand how it works. And this leads to much greater outcomes. I would also highly recommend using the UMPR technique, which I outlined in my last video, 
which is up here and down in the description, since it really provides you with most thorough understanding of the topic, as well as an understanding of how to answer the questions. So my fifth tip is about doing calculation questions, where my tip is to just practice practice. This is basically like any other maths paper, where you just have to practice the different question types and make sure that you really know them. This is because with any science, what they do is they reuse the same question formats in basically all the questions, and they only have maybe a set number of 10 different formats, which they use for different types of questions. What you can do with this information is if you understand the different question formats and you are completely familiar with all of them, then you can lay out a series of steps you do with each format and then apply this to whenever you get a question in that format. This way, when you get a question, you just plug the numbers into the calculator for each step and you get the answer, easy. My sixth tip is about the chemistry option, where my tip is to just memorize it all. Yes, this sounds horrible and completely not what I'm normally preaching about. However, the chemistry and the other science options are very focused around just recall and remembering different facts of information. And there's no way around it. You just have to memorize it all. What I would suggest for this is using flashcards, specifically Anki. For my mock, I just had to memorize a bunch of facts which I crammed in a few days before using Anki and with this I got almost 100% on the option part of paper 3 and that's basically it. However, paper 3 is divided into two parts. It has the option but it also has section 1 and this leads me to my final and seventh tip regarding regarding section 1 of paper 3 which is just give up and pray. <laughs> This section is honestly the one that is hardest to study and they can basically throw anything at you. This being said, there are ways you can prepare. I would say familiarize yourself with reading data and also do many practice questions. And also do many practice questions, paying attention to the keywords that they use for each of these questions, leading me on to my actual seventh tip. Know the key terms. These can be, these can be words such as describe, explain, evaluate, and each of these have a different way of answering the question. Even if you have absolutely no clue what you are talking about, which is going to be the case for most of section 1, what's going to happen is if you pay attention to these key terms and you just start describing things when it asks you to describe, then it's likely that you will still get marks. Often, the answers are in the questions themselves, and so long as you pay attention to these keywords, then you will get the marks even if it's complete baloney what you're talking about. Also, when doing these questions, they do sometimes link back to the actual syllabus. So I would say keep in mind the things that you have learned for paper one and paper two, and try to think about how the questions link back to that, so that when it asks you to explain something or explain why something might happen, you can link it back to the particular topics that it might associate to and come up with possible explanations to really get those top grades. So this was my seven tips for getting a seven in chemistry guide. And I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing if you want to follow more of this channel. And that's all for me. I'll see you next time. There's no stopping it now. There's no facing the heat. Can't fight it or drop it. Now I'm down on my knees. There's no stopping it, stopping it. So hard to believe.